Okay, everyone, right. let's uh, begin the next episode, the second episode of uh, CS Sporting Breaks. Uh, it's me and Ellie here again. And Hello. we have uh, Anna Sika with us, who is a professor at uh, Computer Science Department of Reykjavik University. Anna, do you want to give a short introduction? Yes, I can do that. Um, so my name is Anna Sigurður Ríslind. I am an assistant professor here at the School of Computer Science. I joined, I'm trying to remember, December 2018. So uh, I have been here for about two and a half years approximately. And uh, so far so good. Have you been a professor for longer? Uh, yes, uh, I... Uh, so uh, I started in academia in 2011 and I was working in Sweden. Uh, I was first working as an adjunct uh, in Sweden, which is uh, a teacher. So I was working as a teacher and then uh, I entered the PhD program at University of Western Sweden. Wow. And uh, then uh, once I finished my PhD, I sought a promotion to assistant professor, which I got. And uh, so I was working there from 2011 until actually half a month ago, approximately. So I just, uh, I just left my appointment uh, there. I continued after I started here, just with a small percentage, uh, supervising my PhD student and uh, continuing to work on our uh, research project on autonomous vehicles. Wow, and uh, so you are also, yeah. And what are your subject uh, shifts in that period? What are you into now and how did you come to that? Um, so I want to, I want to say that everything is uh, uh, in line and I have one study focus and I always interest myself in something that's similar to the last thing, but the truth is that uh, it varies <laughs> a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interest driven and uh, depending on what my students are doing, uh, I, I usually interest myself in that too. So I uh, did my, during my PhD studies and my PhD thesis was on data driven healthcare, uh, where we were uh, building using layered modular architecture to build up a digital platform to be uh, used uh, within healthcare setting for cancer patients. And it's mm -hmm. uh, still being used at Salgrenska in, uh, in Sweden. Uh, but uh, I have also been involved in projects on learning analytics, on autonomous driving, on uh, autonomous flying, on <laughs> uh, sleep. I am involved in the sleep revolution project with uh, uh, Erna Sif, who uh, just uh, was here last week with you. Yeah. So yes. all kinds of things, but most things I have been interested in are related to uh, data in some way or another. All right. So, I'm, okay. so they are the I common denominator. Is data. Yes. <laughs> no, no. That's what I want to <laughs> convince you of that it's not all random. It's it's semi-random. <laughs> I actually, yeah, lots of us I think throughout our work and. Process, yeah, process through academia, we see something that we could apply, something we know, and then we're thinking, hmm, this I recently so found, <laughs> yeah, yeah, or I could do something there. Yes. Yeah, I recently found a job with trains, and I was thinking, I mean, they want things that I know, so why not trains? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so, and uh, through, yeah, through all of these uh, changes or shifts, slight shifts of subjects, uh, how about like the different people you meet uh, do you do you have like specific experiences that are difficult or is it easy to transist from one thing to the other? So uh, another common uh, denominator in everything I've done is kind of working interdisciplinary or cross-disciplinary. Uh, so I have, uh, uh, because the things that I have been interested in uh, are not uh, uh, it's not everything, uh, it's not always the same, and it's usually kind of big uh, problems where there is some kind of a social good and a lot of data and so on. Uh, I tend to work across disciplines. So I have had the honor of meeting a lot of different people and from different disciplines that think completely different from me. And that's, 
that's of course always something that uh, gets you thinking about your own views and your own uh, mm -hmm. perceptions and how you have uh, yeah so uh, I think I have grown through those interactions with people from other disciplines uh, other uh, disciplines too mm -hmm. that sounds yeah very nice yeah so I was uh looking at the question and I, one thing I wanted to ask you is uh, because you spent a significant amount of time outside uh, as, a, as a student also and as a, as a teacher and so do you think do you see any difference uh, from all these places that you have been? You yeah. mean outside of Reykjavik? Uh, outside yeah. of Reykjavik, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On the atmosphere, the environment. Sweden. Sweden. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's not that far, <laughs> but still. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that far, but uh, still it's a bit different. Uh, so what I especially like about Reykjavik University is the flatness of the structure. Uh, there is, uh, when I want to travel, I don't have to get a permission from seven different people, which is kind of the structure in Sweden. <laughs> so there is this uh, nice thing about uh, being in a flat structure. Uh, it's really nice uh, and uh, uh, like when we were sending in applications like the application for EU for the sleep revolution project and applications for runnies you don't have to get signatures from all these levels of administration uh, so I really do like the flatness of the of the structure here and that mm -hmm. you are uh, trusted uh, as a researcher to make uh, informed decisions which are good for everyone, both for the university, but also for, for you as a researcher and for your students and so on. So that's that's something I cherish a lot here. Uh, and the, the structure is more hierarchical in Sweden. Yeah, I think pretty much at least everywhere, probably yes. <laughs> not, okay, not everywhere, but uh, we are on the good side of the spectrum. Yeah, let's say because always um, the administration is like, oh, it's gonna be tough. Oh <laughs> <laughs> we need to get science. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. see. That's yeah. That's a nice. But uh, regarding with respect to the people that you meet abroad and here, more or less academia, the academia environment is it the same? Uh, are we more something here? More some like social, less social? Or is it just a matter of uh, bureaucracy that changes this, this stuff? I think we are quite relaxed here, which I really like too. Uh, I think it's quite nice. For instance, uh, I've been uh, at conferences uh, and mm -hmm. uh, some PhD students, they refer to their uh, PhD supervisor as the professor, but uh, I think it's very nice here that uh, uh, people have names and uh, yeah. and uh, you are who you are and uh, people are approachable and uh, like when I go over to uh, to the coffee machine, I uh, everyone says hi and so on. So it's really, uh, it's a uh, social and nice environment and then we had COVID of course which wasn't yeah. so everyone was home for a year but I'm really happy that we're going back to work now and uh, becoming more yeah. social again yeah soon soon maybe that small period of decent sociality we had at the uni will come back yes uh, yeah yeah it's yeah I have to especially what you said about the first names and I assume, Salini, for you as well, I don't know, yeah, uh, there's never, either it's, uh, yeah, and actually I still, for me, I, even though I have mostly overcome it, um, overcome it, um, I still can't say, like, to the really high up people, I can't say their names, <laughs> I find some way of disguising what I want to say with <laughs> some pronoun, <laughs> something to show respect, because it's really, like, quite different not it doesn't mean anything at all I could speak equally relaxed let's say to both cases but uh, <laughs> there are some behavioral patterns that are hard to yeah. Yeah, I remember when I was um, applying for PhDs all over the world and always I am um, addressing a professor uh, by the last name and professor something and I did the same with That's true. and he's the first yeah. one who replied like my name is Grisha you don't have to yes. add anything <laughs> 
<laughs> I was like, oh, well, that's yeah. Fine. Yeah. So you suddenly yeah. uh, you get this um, like the distance remains very, uh, it closed down. Yeah, yeah. which uh, I think is necessary because for all innovation and great collaboration, you have to kind of get to know the pe- person involved mm-hmm. and not uh, put on all these layers of uh, which just make it more difficult which make yeah. it more difficult to write an email because you don't know how to start it and so mm-hmm. on <laughs> yeah actually that makes me think of also the way you should collaborate with people which is not uh, like you shouldn't be afraid to say something just because your position somewhere is lower or higher and it's actually more creative to just demolish all <laughs> let's say formalisms and yes. just collaborate and interact freely yeah so that yeah that includes age differences obviously and uh, origins <laughs> yeah yeah and disciplinary uh, lines and everything just uh, that uh, seeing like uh, the equality of people i think it's also yeah. about kind of your own view of the world if you uh, if you are really passionate about everyone being equal, I think that also applies to the way you act in academia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And in my experience, uh, funnily enough, in my experience, always the people around me tend to be more progressive than outside of academia. <laughs> about yes. Somehow maybe science uh, may you forces know. you to stop yes. thinking. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, talking about COVID, how's uh, how's the new norm going for you? You know, like everything is from home when we yes. are completely in lockdown. How's I, uh, no. Yes, <laughs> it wasn't for me. Let's say that <laughs> I really like coming to work, getting a cup of coffee, and yeah. uh, like sitting down with my routine. Uh, having uh, printed my papers that I have to review and so on. So being at home, it made me work around the clock. I didn't know if it was a Sunday or if it was a regular Thursday. And the kids were home all the time. So I have three children and they were home all the time. So I didn't really know if it was weekend or weekday. And I felt like I just was working all the time, but still not working efficiently. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really that's strange. what everybody has. Somehow you're always working and yet you're not really working. No. Exactly. You never rest, but also you never get anything done. Um, oh, yeah, oh, all right. I feel guilty all the time. It's like I want yes. to work, but I cannot work. And the next time it's like, oh, I should work. And this thing exactly happens, like in cycle. Yeah. yeah. And that's but not they're like the... it be... When you go to the university, it, it breaks this pattern, at least for me. When I leave the building, I somehow mentally uh, leave work a little bit. Uh, Absolutely. Even though I go and answer emails and uh, so on, it, there is a shift there. Yeah. And also it makes you kind of, you are at your sixth, seventh, eighth hour at work and you start thinking, does it make any sense for me to stay more? Exactly. Or am I not going to get, and like put, even putting yourself into that mindset of, okay, you'll get everything up to the point you can, and then you'll stop, somehow, like, improves performance. Yeah. Not even, yeah, consciously. Yeah, it's quite nice. I also, I still try to go to the university when there is enough uh, absence of people for now, because yes. we can't be more than <laughs> an X amount. So, but when there's space, I always go. And mm. it definitely feels more like a productive day. Yeah. I don't have any kids though, so yeah, I mean, <laughs> at home, it's just normal. Empty university, it's all right. Uh, but also, I think it affected a lot of. Uh, as a PhD, I would ex- I, ex- I was expecting that I would get to go to places, yeah. attending conferences, yeah. meeting yeah. people, and I'm in almost one and a half year, and I haven't done that because no. every yeah. Well, and I think it's it's a new experience, but also I think it's kind of bad. Yes. Um, yeah, I want to travel. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I totally agree. It's a super important part of your PhD to get your uh, own network and to feel the support of others when you present your work at a conference yeah. and see the 
that they are actually nodding in the audience and being a little bit impressed. So <laughs> yeah, I really and that's, that's coming, really yeah. bad to miss out on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's coming from someone who studied abroad a lot, right? So it must count for something. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, we all, I think, yeah, I missed as well. I had the chance to go to a few conferences. I can't wait to get back to it. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, it's an important thing. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's not talk more about COVID. Our audience is going to. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, it's of course academia is more more I would say than its core is social, and we might be kind of into science, but all of us are actually happy to be in it mostly because of the people, not only because yeah. of the results. Of course. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, right. uh, okay, so. Do not go through any more questions, Ellie? <laughs> uh, I'm actually feeling quite satisfied. Okay. <laughs> Uh, how, Anna, do you have anything like as an experience from your studies, from your work, anything that you'd want to share with anyone, with whomever's listening? Maybe just the importance of uh, who you walk this road with, like you guys, you have really bonded and it's really important to keep that. Uh, so my friends from my PhD studies, uh, they are still my uh, my best writing buddies because uh, we are completely in the same type of mindset we know each other's routines and we know each other both personally but also uh, work-wise so uh, that's that's something that's uh, often underestimated i think the importance of going this road of a phd journey together and keeping those bonds at least for me, mm -hmm. it has been truly important. I still value the uh, the people that did the PhD program with me uh, so highly because it's also it's not just the supervisor; it's also the people that uh, walked this road with me that made mm -hmm. me who I am today. And I uh, I think that's something that's often overlooked in academia: the importance of having really close collaborations that go way back. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, that, that's actually great advice, and I plan to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, All right. Thank yeah, you, Anna Yeah, it's a, it's a very nice thank you very to talk to you. Yes. Thank uh, you for having me. This was really nice. <laughs> it was, yeah, see, no reason to be <laughs> worried. <laughs> no, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, All right. So, thank you everyone for watching us. Yes. See you probably um, next week. Probably next week. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye, everyone.